Hello everyone and welcome. Glad you could join me again. Today we're going to be doing a simple little DIY project. We're going to be doing a will it run, can we save it video. This lawnmower is a trash pick lawnmower, believe it or not. I found this just a few days ago and this lawnmower is a really good looking lawnmower. It is definitely a candidate for being salvaged because it is not in bad shape at all. And I know exactly where this machine came from. It came from a neighbor of mine that basically didn't use it all that much. And the only reason it wound up on the curb is due to lack of maintenance. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to show you how to fix the minor problems that this machine has simply because the person that owned it did not take care of it. And that's the one thing I want you to take away from this video is take care of your equipment and it will take care of you. There's some minor things we're going to fix on this machine, but let me tell you a little bit of back history about it and tell you a little bit about the machine itself. So you can see right there, it is a Troy built in step, which basically means that it has the motorized back wheels. So you don't need to push it if you don't want to. It will run just fine if you push it. It doesn't need to use the back wheels. You have a choice. Basically, this is the uh, ignition switch right there. And this is the run switch right there for the wheels. So you select what to do based upon what you like to do. Personally, I don't like motorized wheels because they always move slower than my normal walking pace but you know some people do this machine basically has all the bells and whistles on it which is really fancy this was a 500 dollars machine when it was brand new i looked it up and it is really not that old let me show you the sticker right here it is from 2014 as you can see right there it is not an old machine as far as lawnmowers go Lawnmowers can last you multitude of years beyond 20 years. Like the lawnmower that I have right now, I have a green craftsman, and we all know Sears has been out of business for quite a while. And I bought that machine probably in 01, so it's over 20 years old, and it is still cranking away just fine. And this machine has a good motor to it also. As you can see, it has a Briggs & Stratton motor. And I've always had very good success with Briggs and Stratton. Some people don't like them. Let me show you that right there. There you go. Some people don't like Briggs. I have no complaints. They've always been very, very good to me. So I definitely do like them. Anyway, so like I said, this machine has all the bells and whistles on it. You can, you see the lever right there. You can change the height of all the wheels from one lever without having to move around. You have the hose connector right there to clean the deck very easily. You don't even need to turn it over. So it basically has all the bells and whistles. Very nice little machine. But like I said, the person that owned this machine didn't really even use it all that much. It only cut its grass maybe like every three months or so. So roughly four times a year, this machine ran. So do the math, I guess. Uh, four times a year from uh, 2014, that's nine years. That's only 40 times. That's not a lot of uh, mowing right there. Very minimal. So that's why I said this machine is a perfect candidate for bringing it back to life. It's practically new. It's in the prime of its life. So I can definitely fix this guy up. And I'm going to take you guys with me through the process of fixing this guy up. Because like I said, it only has two minor little things. One of them is the ignition coil, which you would think, oh no, the ignition coil doesn't work. That's a big expense. Actually, it's not. It's very inexpensive to replace, but we don't even need to replace it in this case because what I found out is that the coil is still good. It's that this switch up here, this cable right here that you pull to get it to work, you see how stiff it is? You see how it doesn't really want to move? That's the problem. It's lacking in lubrication. And the lack of lubrication is what makes it not work properly. Once we get that loosened up, it'll work just fine. The other thing is the carburetor. And the carburetor is right down there. And I'm going to take that off in just a minute. And the carburetor is the one part that is really, really messed up. And that is the part that I ordered a brand new one. And we'll go into all that in just a minute. But I did order a new carburetor because the other one that is on it is in really bad condition. And all these different things all come across just because... This lawnmower sat outside all its life. It was never stored away in a storage shed or something. And that's one thing, take away from this video, one thing at all, store your equipment in a nice, safe, dry place. 
the weather, the water, all that kind of stuff, it will ruin your machine. And like I said, this is a $500 investment. To have it ruined so quickly just because it sat outside, that is terrible. So after nine years, this machine is ready for the crusher. That's just no good at all. So let's get into this guy. I'm going to take off this top cover right here. Let me get a screwdriver, take that off, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean as far as the coil. And then we'll take the carburetor off, and I'll show you exactly what went wrong with that. And all these problems, like I said, are weather-related, mostly water-related. The water gets into everything and ruins it. So let's get started. All right, guys, well, let's take a little closer look at the ignition problem, and we'll get that taken care of first, since that's the easiest one. So to take this off, there's a couple of little screws right here. Take those off, and then you got to take this cover off. There's a couple of nuts holding it in place. Just get yourself a nut setter. Take this off. This comes right off. This comes right off, and you have the entire engine exposed right there, and you can do whatever you need to do. So we'll put these aside for right now. And the problem is right here. This is the coil, but that's not really a problem. You see how it's a little bit crusty, a little rusty? That really doesn't matter. It does not affect the functioning of the machine itself. Let me pull you in a little closer, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, guys, well, now that we have the engine opened up and you can see a little bit better, this is the coil right here. And it may sound intimidating, but it's not. This is what creates the spark so that the spark plug, this is the cable for the spark plug. The spark plug is over there. So that the spark plug will actually burn the gasoline in the combustion chamber. Very simple indeed. So how do you know if this guy is good or bad? Very simple process, actually, to test that. What you do is you take the spark plug out and crank it over and you'll see if you have any spark at all. If you don't have spark, come back here to the coil and take this little wire off of it because this is the kill switch right there and that is what grounds it out so it will not work. So you remove this wire from the coil and then try to start it again. If it doesn't start, the coil is bad. If it does start, the coil is good and all you do is have a problem with this wire grounding out somewhere or like I said in this case, where that cable, which is back over here, I'll show you that in a moment, that cable pulls a little lever which connects to this cable right here, and that is what causes it to ground out. And that's all that's wrong with this, because I already tested it doing that procedure that I just mentioned. The coil works, but it doesn't work when it's hooked up, because it's grounding out. So let me show you what I'm talking about back there. All right, so this contraption that you see in the center of the screen is what controls the grounding out of the ignition switch. And this is what would prevent you from starting the machine if you had a problem. See, right now it's in the off position, but I'm going to pull on the handle, the red handle that I showed you previously, and you see it's supposed to go all the way back, but you see it doesn't, and that's the whole problem right there. It doesn't go all the way back because it's binding up. A little bit of lubrication will help this problem and allow it to go all the way back and solve that problem. So let me lubricate that a bit. So all you do is just a little WD-40 or something like that, shoot it right there into the cable itself. And this is something you should do every so often, a little bit of maintenance right there, and you'll be good to go with no trouble at all. And then, obviously, a little bit more at the top of the cable, and that will make it a little easier for it to go. But right there, I can already feel that it's moving so much more freely and a little bit more work, and it'll work even better than that. And obviously, also, one thing also is that if it still doesn't go back far enough, then this can be adjusted on the top of the cable. You can take out some of the slack because maybe over time, due to the fact that it was binding up, it could have stretched out the cable a little bit. So we'll find out which one is the problem later on. Right now, I'm just going to lubricate it and see if that takes care of it. If it still doesn't, then I'll just have to adjust the cable. But you see how easy this is. It's right on the back of the machine. It's actually fully exposed little lubricant right there every so often touch that up and you'll save yourself a lot of headaches all right guys so i have the lawnmower lifted up so i can work on it more easily and i'm going to set up the camera so you can see what i'm doing in a moment but i just wanted to point out for you guys that don't have this if you don't have one of these 500 pound or 1000 pound hydraulic lift tables you should really consider getting one if you do this kind of work on a regular basis or even for lifting up heavy things is really convenient like right now, I mean, I'm going to work on this at a very convenient level right here, standing, where normally if I didn't have this table, I'd have to be working on it on the ground, which is a real backbreaker once you start getting a little bit older like I am. 
So I lifted this guy up and we're going to take out the carburetor, which is right under there. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. And on top of it, I have a brand new one that I just got. And I'm going to tell you all about that because I got a really good deal on that. So let me set up the camera and I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. All right, guys. So I set you up a little bit better so you can see exactly what I'm going to be doing here. So we took care of the ignition problem, which was the no cost option. That was easy peasy. Took care of that out of the way. Now we're going to take care of the more complicated and slightly more costly problem because we're going to replace the carburetor on this one. Now, a lot of times you can get away with just fixing it in some way, depending on what the problem is. Sometimes it's just dirty and you clean it. I've done that in previous videos. This one, I took it apart previously and it was so bad, I decided to replace it. I'm going to dissect it a little bit later in the video. I'm going to show you exactly what was wrong with it. Anyway, so to get into this guy, you take off the air cleaner first. That comes off. Then you take off the filter. And then we get into this contraption first. And that just has a couple of nuts right here. Just take a nut setter and you just unscrew it and it should come right off. And like I said, the problem with this one is that the needle and seat are so badly corroded by water getting into the carburetor that I did not feel comfortable just cleaning it. I think it's going to have problems. It's going to start overflowing. The gas is going to leak all over the place. I just didn't trust it. So I decided to replace it. And what I did was I got this carburetor right here. Let's make sure it looks the same first before we start digging into it. And it seems to be pretty much identical. So that seems to be a good bet right there. Wanted to make sure it was the right carburetor before I started taking it apart. Anyway, so I got this carburetor at a bargain of a price. I got it for under 10 bucks, if you can believe that, which is the reason I decided to do this because at 10 bucks, I can certainly afford to spend that. Now, this is not an OEM. I looked up what an OEM Briggs & Stratton carburetor would be, and that was around 65 bucks, which is a little bit pricey for a junky machine. Now, if this was my machine, and I knew the entire history of it, the maintenance, and I knew it was in good condition, uh, OEM might not be a problem. But considering it's a junky mower, and I'm going to try to bring it back to life, I decided to go the cheap route. Now, I first looked this up on Amazon and eBay, and they were around 20 30 bucks, something like that. Then I came across this place called HippoStore.com, and they had these carburetors for under 10 bucks. And HippoStore.com, what they do is they have... They basically have parts for all sorts of small engines, whether it's lawnmowers, snowblowers, uh, weed whackers, uh, generators, compressors, anything that has a small engine, they have replacement parts for it. And you see, I got the carburetor and that came with the seals and everything, which is very convenient. Some of them don't bring that. And then they even threw in a few other things that I wasn't expecting. I mean, I got some uh, metric conversion tables right there, free of charge. They just included it. And these are not paper. They're not cardboard. They're actually plastic. So I'm going to hang on to these guys for sure. And if you get them dirty, you get your hands dirty with the grease or whatever, wipe it off and keep on going. They're plastic. They will last. And they actually included a magnet. There you go right there. I got a refrigerator magnet right there. You can see a very nice quality, a 3D magnet. I don't know if you can see it. Very thick. You can see the magnet material on the back. So a very nice quality magnet. Throw it in. No cost to me. And I got all this nice stuff for free. So for under 10 bucks, you can get a carburetor or whatever. Check out HippoStore.com. I'm going to put a link in the description down below. You can go check it out. This looks like a decently built carburetor. I don't see anything really wrong with it. So I'm going to try to replace it and we'll see exactly how it turns out. So let's keep on going. Let's take this guy off of here. And it's very simple. Your nut setter again. Just unscrew the nuts right there. Uh, unscrew the bolts, I should say one on each side and then it just comes right off and there you go now all I got to do is basically undo the uh, gas tank hose right here this goes to the gas tank right there undo this undo these little levers and it comes right out so let's take care of that Well, that gas line is really stuck on there. Sometimes if it's really stuck, you can cut it off. 
but I don't want to do that because I don't have any of these uh, hoses on hand. And this one doesn't look too bad. It's just stuck on there. And that's why you want new seals. Look at that. The old seal just broke off. It's in bad shape. So that's why you want new seals whenever you get a carburetor kit. There you go. That makes it easier for me to move this around. There we go. That one's better. And then this one comes out there. There we go. All right. There is the old carburetor. Took that guy off. And we're going to look at it on the bench in a moment and see exactly what the problem is with this guy. It's internal. So I'll show you that in just a moment. Let's put the new guy back on. All right. So I got the O-ring in place. That is a terrible design that Briggs came up with. Every time you push it in, it wants to pop back out. You put it in, it wants to pop back out. It's like you're supposed to put it there and then put the carburetor in place, which is rather annoying since you still got to tie some things onto this. So I basically got it to sit there, and I'm going to squeeze it back in place with the carburetor right now. So that's a Briggs design. It has nothing to do with this carburetor kit. Briggs just put it so that it doesn't sit really well in there. It's supposed to sit there, but it wants to pop out. So terrible design from Briggs. Here we go. Some of these engineers come up with some really crazy ideas on things that don't really work out so much. All right, so make sure all the parts move freely, and they do. And then we just put the air cleaner back on, and I'm going to drop this guy down and see exactly how it works. All right, guys, so before we move on and see if the repairs actually work, let's dissect this little guy right here, which I know is a problem. That's why I replaced it. But this is the OEM carburetor right there. You can see the brakes and Stratton stamping right there. This is the OEM one that I took off. So basically, you see on the outside, let's start on the outside. You see all the corrosion and stuff like that. A nice, clean, new carburetor shouldn't like, look like that. It's a little dirty. That's no big deal. But look at the corrosion on the metal. It should not be all corroded like that. And that's from sitting outdoors. See all the corrosion right here? That's from sitting outdoors. That's what the weather does to this type of metal. So let's go on the inside where the real problem exists. All this out here, this thing was pretty much black when I got it. But I cleaned it all up thoroughly, and I got it almost to work. See the Briggs Stratton right there, the stamping? This is the OEM one. So anyway, I got it pretty much to work, pretty darn close. But let's look on the inside, and we'll see exactly where the fun begins. Get this guy out of there, and take the float pole off. So let's look in here, and you see, you can see down there a lot of corrosion and so forth. Even though I did clean it, I couldn't get it all off. So let's take out this guy right here, remove this pin. And once we take off the float, the problem should be evident to a lot of you guys that know carburetors. Some of you may not know, so let me point it out. See this right here? That's part of the needle right there. That's part of the needle. That is not the needle. I base This thing was so stuck in there, I had to pry it apart. Let's put this down here. The needle's still in there. I had to pry it apart, and I broke it, and that's why I tell you that. Let me see if I can get this guy out of here now. Get the heck. Now it's, let me, oh my God. Let me get some other tweezers here. That is so stuck in there. I basically could not get that out previously. I had to get it out with a drill bit. I had to drill it out because I could not get it to come out no matter what I did. That's why I tell you that this thing is no good. Hold on, let me get a screw or something. I have to get a screw to stick it in there and then pull it out. Hold on. All right, let's see if this will work. Let me screw that on there. And there we go. See, that's the needle right there. Focus. There you go. That's the needle right there. See how corroded that is? Look at the corrosion on that. That is just no good. That's why I couldn't trust this machine. I couldn't trust this carburetor because I'm sure this thing is probably going to be leaking all over the place and giving me tons of trouble. So this part is supposed to be inside there. It's not supposed to come apart. It's supposed to be all one piece. But I busted it. You can see closely right there. See how I broke it? Taking it out. Not right now. Originally, when I first diagnosed this, 
I broke this thing taking it out. All this is supposed to be one piece. And you, you can't tell, but it, it is so corroded. It just gets stuck every time I put it in and it doesn't want to come back out. So this measures, meters, regulates, whatever you want to say, the fuel going into the carburetor. How can I trust this thing to really do its job going forward down the road? There is no way I could trust this thing to actually perform properly. It is so corroded that, like I said, it was fused. Let me show you. It was fused to the inside of that thing. And that is probably like brass or something, which really doesn't do that very commonly. But you can see all the corrosion is still there. Even though I cleaned it, it's still bad. All this down here, you see all that? That's water damage. So it was really, really in bad shape. And I said, for 10 bucks, I can really afford to replace this and make this into a properly running machine. So that's why I said, for 10 bucks, to hip a store, that's a bargain. I mean, 65 or whatever it is at Briggs, eh, it's okay, but it's a little pricey. But if you have a machine that you want to just keep it going and do a bargain replacement, I would check them out for sure. So anyway, there you go. That's the reason that I went through all this trouble. The needle and the seat were so corroded that they were totally garbage. No way to clean that and keep it going. If you try to sand it and epoxy it and do all sorts of weird things, you're going to have nothing but trouble down the road. So that's why I didn't bother with all that. So now let's go on and see if the repairs actually worked. All right, guys, here we are at the end of our journey. Will it pay off? Will the repairs that I did to this machine actually pay off? You saw that I already previously diagnosed this machine before I started the video. So I knew that this was still a good machine, even though somebody threw it away because they didn't know how to do basic maintenance or any kind of minor repair to it because the repairs really are quite minor, which any of you guys can do. This is not rocket science. You guys can do this too. You saw how easy it was for me to do. Lubricate the cable so that the ignition coil turns on when it's supposed to. Simple as that. A little WD-40 and you're good to go. And a lot of times you can just clean the carburetor on these things and have it run. This carburetor was so badly corroded that I decided to order a new one. I mean, for 10 bucks from HIPAAstore.com, that was a bargain. So there was no way I was going to go through the trouble of risking having a bad carburetor on there that might work sometimes and may not work other times. It was just not worth it. For 10 bucks, I basically should have brought this machine right back. I'm going to start it up right now and see what it does. This machine has no primer bulb or any of that kind of stuff to it. It's, it's fully automated. It should start on the first crank. At least that's what it says on the stickers that it has on there. It's self-priming, does everything by itself. I'm going to give it a shot and see if it works right now. So did it pay off? For 10 bucks, did I save this machine? Let's find out. Alright guys, there you have it. I fixed it really, really economically. And by the way, I obviously put gas in it and I did put oil in it in case you're wondering. So it's not going to burn itself up. It is running properly. I checked everything before I decided to crank it over for you guys. So therefore, you saw right there, the moment of truth, everything paid off. For 10 bucks, a brand new carburetor and a simple lubrication, I have a brand new more right now that I'll keep or I'll either donate to someone. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But very, very simple repair for a very nice machine from Troy Built. And you guys can do this repair yourself. It is really easy to do. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy DIY projects like this. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye for now.